Welcome back. Through this video, we'll understand the DHCP based at attacks. So before uh, understanding the DHCP based attacks, we need to understand the DHCP. So we know basically DHCP is uh, used to uh, assign IP errors automatically for the client missions. And also this uh, IP errors assignment uh, is going to be uh, based on the request from the client and for the request, uh, the server is going to respond. And also the uh, DHCP server is going to uh, uh, serve the IP to the client based on the request by uh, verifying the MAC errors of the client. So basically here uh, the DHCP server identifies a client by using its MAC address. And uh, also here we will understand about the DHCP process or how the IP assignment happens in the background. So for uh, the successful IP as assignment process, uh, there are uh, four uh, background processes uh, has to be uh, successfully completed. So the DHCP discover, DHCP offer, DHCP request and DHCP acknowledgement. So for any successful IP assignment, these process should be uh, successfully completed. And now we'll uh, initially understand about the DHCP discover process. So for understanding the DHCP discover process, so in this picture, I have a DHCP server and five clients. And the DHCP server is configured with the scope range 192.168.11.1 to uh, 192.168.11.100. So between these range, uh, our client devices will get the IP address. And also, uh, we'll also need to understand how the uh, DHCP discover process is initiated from the uh, client machine. See generally whenever uh, we power on a system, it might be a physical machine or a virtual machine. Whenever the virtual machine has been powered on, so initially the, the post process will uh, get completed. Once the post process is done, then the operating system is uh, going to boot. And uh, once the operating system starts booting, all the services will start. So out of all the services, there will be one important service called a network connection service. So uh, whenever the network uh, connection service starts, it verifies the uh, network configuration, that is the TCP IP configurations. So if the TCP IP configuration is uh, uh, configured to obtain IP address automatically, so in that case, so the uh, uh, network connection service uh, will uh, trigger the uh, DHCP client service. So every computer will be running with the DHCP client service. So it might be a, a desktop end user computer or it might be a, a server operating system or Windows 10 operating system, whatever the operating system. So if the network configuration is set to obtain IP address automatically, in that case, the network connection service will trigger the DHCP uh, client service. So every machine will be running with the DHCP client service. Now it's the responsibility of the DHCP client service uh, to uh, find the DHCP server in the network and to get the IP address from the DHCP server. So for uh, finding the uh, DHCP server in the network, so initially the uh, DHCP client service starts with the DHCP discover process. So through the DHCP discover process, a DHCP discover packet is going to be sent into the network. And uh, any packet that is sent into the network that should have the destination address. But here, the client machine doesn't know which is the DHCP server in the network, so it has to search for the DHCP server. So in order to search the DHCP server, so here the uh, DHCP client service is going to send this DHCP discover packet to all the network computers, So it, which means it is going to broadcast this DHCP discover packet. So the destination address will be the hardware level broadcast address. So uh, all field F, this is a, a MAC based broadcast address. So the MAC broadcast address will be the destination address and source address will be the same computers network cards MAC address will be the source address. So with this information this packet will be sent into the network. So all the computers in the network will receive the DHCP discover packet. So out of all the computers only the DHCP uh, server will be able to respond to the DHCP discover packet and all the other computers will reject the DHCP discover process. So this is basically the DHCP offer process. So the computer which is running with the DHCP uh, service, so that will respond to the DHCP discover packet and the rest of the computers will drop the packet. 
and while uh, responding so the response is basically called as the dhcp offer process so here dhcp server will be maintaining a database called uh, address lease database so in this address lease database it will maintain the ip address and mac address information of all the uh, devices whichever for which the ip has been allocated by the dhcp server so those information will be uh, stored in this database that is the ip allocation informations and uh, here the dhcp server first will verify in its database whether the uh, uh, the requested mac address is already into the database or not so if uh, the requested MAC address is already into the database, so obviously uh, for that particular MAC address, there will be an IP allocated already. So that IP will be given back to the particular client. So if this is the first time the client machine is uh, being powered on or being connected into the network. So in that case, the, the DHCP server has to uh, offer a new IP address. So here the DHCP server will uh, allocate or it, it will offer a new IP address saying that so this IP address is available free if want you can use this IP address and uh, this packet basically called as the DHCP offer packet and this DHCP offer packet is going to be sent to the uh, destination computer that is from where the DHCP discover packet has been received so to the same uh, MAC address the DHCP offer packet will be sent so once the client machine receives the DHCP offer so then the DHCP request process starts so uh, after getting the offer so the DHCP client machine will accept the offer and after accepting the offer the DHCP client machine will uh, send a request saying that okay the offered IP address I am accepting kindly allocate me this IP address and all the other configurations so this is basically a, a DHCP request so after an offer and the client machine is going to be responding with the DHCP request packet and again the DHCP request packet is going to be sent back to the DHCP server and uh, for which the DHCP server is going to respond with the DHCP acknowledgement process so once the DHCP request has been received immediately the DHCP server will reserve the IP address for the requested MAC address for a period of time so the period we usually call it as a lease period so while configuring the DHCP scope itself we will configure the DHCP lease period in Windows computer Windows servers the lease period will be eight days by default and that can be customized based on your requirement so based on the lease configuration so this IP address will be reserved for the period of time for this particular MAC address unless until the lease uh, gets expired so this particular IP will be allocated only for this MAC address. So only if there is any request from this particular MAC address at, this, at that time only this IP will get allocated unless until this IP will not be allocated to any other computers. And basically this is how the DHCP uh, works. So this is how the client machine gets the IP from the DHCP server so uh, by taking the advantage of this particular uh, uh, working process maybe uh, uh, a perpetrator who may who might be connected into your network uh, a real attacker who is into your network who is connected or who is compromised any computer in your network so they can perform several kind of attacks so once the list has been uh, reserved so all the other configurations will be given to the client machine including the uh, um, lease period and the gateway IP and the preferred DNS and alternate IP so all these informations will be given to the client machines and once the client uh, receives the acknowledgement so the client will get registered with this IP address subnet mask gateway and the DNS IPs and as I said earlier so with the, taking advantage of this process the uh, attacker can uh, uh, perform several kind of attacks out of that uh, DHCP starvation attack is one of the famous attack so DHCP starvation attack is something like uh, 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 sending the forged uh, DHCP discover packet uh, to the DHCP server on into the network so where the uh, 
uh, attacker will have a, a forged uh, computer or a forged uh, application or a forged service through which a random DHCP discover packets will be uh, sent into the network and uh, the DHCP discover packet will have the random MAC address so immediately what the DHCP server is going to do is so based on the request uh, based on the DHCP discover process packet received so uh, obviously the DHCP server is going to reserve the IP address for all the uh, DHCP discover packets so if uh, all the IPs has been leased to the uh, uh, attackers forged MAC address so when there is a legitimate computer trying to uh, uh, get connected so the legitimate computers will not get the IP address because the DHCP server say there is no IP free so the requested IP is not available or it is not free so the client machines will be given with the response that DHCP no acknowledgement saying that IP address is not free so if the client machine doesn't get the IP address from the DHCP server obviously the production computers will not be able to communicate into the network or the production computers will not be able to communicate with their respective servers or the services so this is a, this is a kind of a DDoS attack so where the DHCP service is made unavailable for the legitimate client computers and also the the attacker can also perform another kind of attack which is called as a rogue DHCP server attack so where uh, 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 an attacker may maybe uh, he might be directly connected into the network or he might have any compromised computer in your production network so in that case uh, the attacker also may have a DHCP server so uh, that is uh, as like your production DHCP server the attacker may have some forged or rogue DHCP servers in the network so whenever there is a DHCP discover process from the client so obviously the DHCP discover process is going to reach all the uh, connected devices sort of which all the computers is going to respond for this again the, uh, the legitimate DHCP server also is going to offer the IP similarly the rogue DHCP server also is going to uh, um, offer the IP so both the offers will reach the uh, client machine and even when both the offers are received from the client machine from the DHCP server the client can accept any only one offer so it will accept one offer and it will reject the other offer so where the attacker will have the DHCP server uh, he'll have his DHCP servers response time lesser than the legitimate DHCP server so if the response time is uh, lesser than the legitimate DHCP server so where the attackers server is going to respond faster than your uh, legitimate DHCP server so that all the client machines will get the uh, IP offered from the attackers IP error attackers DHCP server and also it, the client machines will get the IP address from the different range out of their production environment so again the client machine will not be able to communicate into their uh, regular production network so again this is also a kind of uh, uh, DDoS attack and that's all for uh, understanding the DHCP based attack and we'll uh, uh, dis discuss the uh, other topics in the upcoming videos until then bye bye